We all know that cats are better than dogs. It's not like an evil overlord would force me to say that or anything. I said what you wanted me to say, so just leave me alone, okay? I did a good job. You behave now. Hey guys, a long time ago I've adopted a dog, a robotic dog called Pittle, and you can watch everything about it in this video there. But it wasn't the dog that came first, it was actually the cat. And oh boy, I have a lot to say about cats in general. I actually had dogs and cats in the past, several of them to be precise, and I can tell you one thing. Cats are much more difficult to work with, including robotic ones. If you had to choose between a dog and a cat, if you're a cat person, you probably would go with the cat itself. But the looks can be deceiving, and as in nature, these things can be very temperamental. And I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just a nibble is much more difficult beast to deal with. And after playing with uh, Nibble for some time, I do consider Bittle to be slightly easier to start with and perhaps to leave the cat for someone that likes a challenge. After all, it's true what they say about the cats, their looks can be deceiving, and in this case, it was exactly that. Some differences are easy to spot, the main one that Nibble has more servos. You have additional servo for the tail, so you can waggle its tail, and extra servo for its neck, so apart from panning, you also can tilt, which is quite handy. Another one is the, obviously the eyes, which are made from ultrasonic sensors with LEDs, which are, well, simply put, adorable. And yes, you can program the animations, colors, and how the cat behaves as well. I had a plan to assemble the robot during the livestream because I thought by this time after assembling the Bittle I know what I'm doing and it shouldn't take that much time. But do reserve a lot of time because um, you're gonna need approximately two to three hours to actually go through the steps. Thankfully they have a really nice video about it. At first I had impressions that the wooden elements would be a little bit flimsy but as my build progressed I quickly discovered that once you start putting things together they gain in rigidity and the final product is actually quite sturdy. And considering how much time it took me to actually assemble all this and make it working, uh, then I probably wouldn't recommend this particular pet to a younger kid. They're gonna have a much better time with Bittle. Once assembled, it looks really cute. It comes with a battery, so you don't have to worry about that. You can just plug that in and get that charged. You'll notice that your kit comes with three different adapter boards that you can use to interface with your robot. So you'll have a Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth, and uh, over the wire using serial connection. There is also a infrared remote which you can use to command and control your robot just to check things out. But I would strongly recommend you to perform calibration first using Bluetooth connection and your mobile app because I think that's the easiest way to do it. But this is not where the fun ends. As you can see, not all of the slots are populated. There are three additional I2C slots for extra sensors and a small header which you can use to connect to Raspberry Pi. Now, the form factor is for Raspberry Pi 3 A series, which is the square type of the favorite SBC. However, you could fit and it probably would work better with the latest version of Raspberry Pi 02W, which is just as powerful as Raspberry Pi 3 series, but much smaller and lighter, which would then remove issues with balancing. I've mentioned that the robot itself has extra servos for the total of 11 servos, to articulate to control functions of the robot. It makes it bigger and slightly heavier than the dog equivalent, so be sure to make some space for the cat on your desk. It's definitely going to be knocking things around, and if you have cats, you know how it goes. You can't really leave them alone because they're going to be always up to something, and even with the robotic ones, it's the same case. I've mentioned the ultrasonic sensor instead of eyes and the RGB LEDs that you can use to control the animations and how the cat is perceived by environment. But there is also an internal IMU which controls how the cat behaves by providing accelerometer and gyroscope data to prevent the cat from tipping over. So from the hardware perspective, the robot is actually put together quite nicely, with the only shortcomings being around the neck area. It doesn't really carry much load, but I wish the neck area was resolved slightly a little bit better because there is a 
a bit of excess play and, well, it's my personal annoyance. There is also a tiny switch on the motor controller which can switch over from the Raspberry Pi compatible mode to Arduino compatible mode and then you can connect your robot to Arduino and take advantage in programming using Arduino libraries. Now that you know which hardware you can use to actually program this thing, let's talk about software a little bit more. I already mentioned that there are a couple of ways of controlling your pet animal, including via mobile phone and dedicated app, using remote control, Wi-Fi connection or serial connection. Whichever you're gonna choose, well, you'll have to be up to the task because actually programming robots like this, it's quite challenging. I would strongly recommend you to play about first with different firmwares. Some of the firmwares will enable proximity sensor and different movements, like for example right now on a cat, some of them will uh, trigger random behavior too, which is awesome, but take a moment and observe the cat in motion, because uh, recognizing gates and instincts is something that you'll have to get familiar with. That'll give you an idea about the range of motions and how the cat behaves, performing different movements, and it will uh, well, get you familiar with what, what it takes to actually get this robot to move rather than just tip over randomly. Just like Bittle, everything is split into uh, gates, instincts and new abilities. Instincts are the list of different moves and tricks that uh, the pet is capable of storing in EEPROM memory. That's the memory in the device itself. As it uses EEPROM, which is limited to number of reads and writes, you probably shouldn't be writing to it very often, and it's not for testing, and this is where the new abilities come in. Those are pretty much the same building blocks as uh, instincts, however they are not stored in EEPROM, they are stored in PROGMEM, and this means that you can write and make mistakes and write again without affecting your EEPROM uh, lifespan. Lastly, we have gates or behaviors, which are formed from individual positions of servos and often repeated. So those would be responsible, for example, uh, for moving of the robot or walking. When it comes to programming a robot like that, you have several options. If you know what you're doing, you can deep dive into Arduino libraries and start coding there or use a Python libraries that are existing on a GitHub and just go nuts. I've seen a lot of different people doing some insane stuff, including AI, which is way over my understanding of what you can do with robots like that. But to get started, I would strongly recommend you to actually use the program software supplied by Petoy. That software has the ability to upload different firmwares, calibrate your robot, and let you play with the skill configuration. It's probably the easiest way of seeing what works, what tipped the robot over, and it'll give you a necessary uh, window or insight into how to balance your robot and how complex movement can get because it often involves more than a single servo if you want to perform something because it's all about balancing all the servos in the center of mass at the same time. And if you don't want to start from scratch, also take my advice and import a couple of gates and try to manipulate them to see how well you can uh, control your robot. Just do yourself a favor and don't use any of the interactive firmwares when using Skill Composer because you're going to get confused and the robot's going to get confused and it's not going to be performing as well. One of the things that is however lacking is the code craft which was present on Bittle. You are able to use the web IDE to use the blocky code to control how the robot plays using visual programming. It's a great way to introduce younger makers to programming robots like that and let them experiment without, uh, you know, the need of learning proper coding first. While I really, really cat and I really like Nibble, I think I'm a dog person at heart and Bittle is the way to get started because it's less expensive, it's easier to manage. However, if you're looking for a proper challenge, then Nibble is probably the toy robot for you. Now you can get one for $268.90, which is a nice price point, and there might be a small discount included in the description of this video, so definitely do check out. But regardless of your preferences, I don't think you can go wrong with either of the choices. So if you fancy yourself a new robotic pet, then either Bittle or Nibble would make a great choice. Big thanks to Petoy for sending me this robot for the review and if you excuse me right now I'll have to talk to my cat and explain to him that I'm the master. Wish me luck for that. And while you're here, why don't you check my social media and follow me there to check what I'm going to do next. Big thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.